Welcome back to WNEM's Friday Night Lights State Championship Special. Welcome back to part three of our Friday Night Lights State Championship Special. The Grand Blank Bobcats had a whirlwind of a season with a brand new stadium and finishing second in the Saginaw Valley League Red Division just behind Davison. However, one Bobcat would miss most of the season with an injury and he would battle to get back on the field to finish his senior year with his teammates. This year was a homecoming for Grand Blank's Carson Howe. After spending a year at Blue Ridge High School in Virginia, Carson returned to the Bobcats football team for his senior year. As an athlete who can play many positions on the field, Carson in the first two weeks of the season was on a hot start, which included a 67-yard pick six against Carmen Ainsworth. Carson was riding high heading into week three with Grand Blank's first home game at their brand new stadium. I was incredibly thankful to be back, and I think the emotions surrounding that game, like I think everybody was just as excited as I am, but it definitely meant a little more to me because I had missed out on the crowds for a year. So seeing this, this beautiful stadium all packed is definitely like a surreal emotion. Unfortunately, that experience wouldn't last long as Carson suffered a broken fibula right at this spot on the field. I was rushing the, pat the quarterback. I kind of tried to dip under a block. I lost my footing and then who knows who fell on me. There's like three people behind me and I got fell on by a few people and it ki I kind of just felt like pop, pop, pop. And I was like, oh, like something's not right. This injury was one unlike anything Carson had ever experienced before. He had never had surgery for an injury and this one required seven screws and a metal plate in his ankle. All Carson wanted was to get back on the field with his guys. At first I was like, oh my God, there's no way I'm coming back. But then I was like, I kept research. I'm like, dude, somebody had to have done this before. And so I look it up and I'm like, hey, Terrell Owens came back from the same injury, same exact injury, 2007. He came back and played in the Super Bowl seven weeks later. I'm like, hey, this is possible. And then I see the things that Aaron Rodgers is doing and his quote like, hey, just because it hasn't been done yet doesn't mean it's impossible. It just means it hasn't been done yet. And so I kind of took that and ran with it. I'm hey, hey, if anybody can do it, it's me. And run with it, he did. Carson kept rehabbing, hoping to make it back in time for the Bobcats' playoff game against Davison. After eight weeks of grueling work, the call was made. I really didn't expect it to happen, but I had made incredible progress. And honestly, like the doctors just kind of said I, I was an anomaly and they, I was probably one of the craziest athletes they've seen just the way that I, I was running and doctors were like, holy crap, how is he doing this? Like I was running at like four weeks and some people aren't even walking then. So it's just really, they're like, oh my gosh, like you're crazy. And so that Monday I went to my doctor. I'm like, hey man, like I can do this. Like this is like my dream. This is the game I wanted to play in. Like, can you please like make something happen for me? He's like, he looks at my x-rays and he's like, you're good. Carson defied the odds and made it back for one last ride with his boys in the district finals against Davison. In his return, Carson would force a fumble and pick up a couple tackles for loss. Even though the Bobcats couldn't get the win, Carson is incredibly grateful to everyone who helped him get back on the field. At the end of the day, I got to do what I wanted. I got to play one last game with my friends that I've, I've grown up with. I mean, the, the kids that I sat at my lunch table with since sixth grade and the kids that I played youth football with since I was eight years old, it's just like, it was hard not to get emotional because like it's just what I wanted and so I'm just incredibly thankful that I got one more and that um, my that everybody helped me get through it. How is isn't done yet though at Grand Blank. He's currently gearing up for the start of lacrosse season in the spring which is what he plans to play when he goes to college. Now let's shift gears to the Harry Hawkins Award. It's an honor that recognizes the top senior football player in Saginaw County. There are three finalists. First up Braylon Isom from Heritage. He set the state record for the most touchdowns and receiving yards in a high school career with 52 TDs and 3,830 yards. During Isom's senior year, he tied the record for touchdowns in a single season with 26. Isom is committed to Miami of Ohio. Next up is Preston Otter from Novell Catholic Central. He was the Panthers starting quarterback this season while also playing in the defensive secondary. Otter finished with over 2,200 total yards, including 27 touchdowns. On defense, he snaked two interceptions, one of which was a pick six. If selected, Otter would be the first Novell Panther to win this award. The third finalist is Freeland Sam Talaga. He's also a two-way player. On defense, Talaga finished with 89 tackles, seven of them for a loss, and he nabbed two interceptions, which both got returned for a touchdown. In the backfield on offense, Talaga had 783 yards and 14 touchdowns and was frequently used by the Falcons to pick up two-point conversions. Talaga is committed to play at Harvard next season, and the winner of the Hawkins Award will be announced on, De on December 7th. We still have one more segment left on our Friday Night Light State Championship Special. After the break, we'll announce our WNEM Play of the Year, and it's one you won't want to miss. <laughs> 